Hey guys, on today's Geek Beat, quadcopters, kayak hacking, solar arrays, and my man cave. Shall we begin? Today's episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Lumosity. Hey guys, okay, I'm going to give you a bunch of updates. Now, a couple of things before we get started. First of all, Dave Curley is out sick today. So you guys like tweet him or something and wish him well or tell him to die or something. Get back to work so we can edit these videos. I am shooting this entire video on my Samsung Galaxy camera, which I love. It's awesome and very versatile. So you guys will see how we can do that. But I'm going to shoot it, I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to share it with you guys. So today it's all about updates. My normal thought is I like to give you a little teaser and then I like to wait until the story is fully baked. But you keep asking me for all kinds of updates on these things and I was actually told by somebody that I'm depriving you of half the fun by not getting to see what's happening in the meantime, kind of in the process. So here's a bunch of updates, but the main thing today is I'm going to show you my Franken kayak, my Kai hack, if you will, where we hack the motor on the kayak. We'll get to that in a minute. First of all, you remember that quadcopter that I bought a while back, the DJI Phantom, and I fixed it by adding a gimbal to it? Well, that gimbal actually burnt out the brain on the quadcopter, which really pisses me off because uh, the company that sold it to me promised it would work and instead it damaged it. So don't just be buying them anywhere. Um, DJI fixed it for me. And so I do have the quadcopter back. This is it. This is my baby. Also, you'll see I added these little guards uh, to the rotors. So that means that I can fly it into like branches or walls or whatever without breaking a rotor every single time I do that. Um, just, so you, just so you get to see how we carry this thing around, we actually made a case for it. It's a Pelican case. Uh, this is so that we can travel with it and take it on the road with us. Um, and I disassemble these guards and take off the rotors. And then it fits right down in this section here. And then we keep a bunch of spare blades with us. We have several battery chargers. And we have a whole slew of batteries. And then the controller fits in there. So that's how the quadcopter goes. It's back. It's back in action. Uh, DJI is actually working on an official gimbal for it and they promised me to send me one as soon as it's ready so I can share it with you guys. That will give you steady video while it's flying around instead of having the camera tilt like this when the camera is flying. As the camera goes sideways, uh, I mean I'm sorry, as the uh, quadcopter goes sideways the camera will go the opposite way to keep it nice and level. So that will be cool. That's what I was trying to do before. It didn't work out so well. Anyway, let's get on to the big update of the day. The kayak. Here it is. It's uh, sitting here on my welding table because that's a good spot for it. But what I want you to see is it's got a motor on it now. So let's talk about how I did that. First of all, this motor is a Minn Kota motor. This is a 30 pound uh, foot of thrust motor. It mounts onto boats by this simple clamping unit right here. We just loosen these up and this whole unit will just come right off uh, so it can be put away. Now here's what I did. So the kayak obviously isn't usually made for a motor but that never stopped me before. Uh, what I didn't want to do though was put all kinds of ridiculous holes in this thing Especially because, I don't know, maybe if we wanted to sell it one day or something, people aren't going to want that. So I was looking for a way to essentially keep it stock, but still get this motor on it. Here's what I did. First of all, um, down in the uh, uh, sidewall, top of the, top of the kayak, what do you want to call it? I mounted these little pieces that you see this PVC piece sticking up out of. That believe it or not, is just a fishing pole mount. You can get them at Academy Sports or whatever sporting goods store, like 12 bucks, okay? 
and they're made for kayaks because people go fishing and they want to take a rod with them. So this thing, uh, you basically, this, if this white PVC wasn't here, you'd just have this pointing the other way and your uh, fishing pole rod would stick up out of here so that you can, it'll, it'll hold your poles. So what we did was I got two of those, as you can see, we got one on either side and I've happened to find that this size of PVC, which is about two inches, I think it's just under, uh, I got it at Home Depot for about two bucks. I bought a two foot piece of it and I cut it and fit it down in here. I drilled a couple of holes through it, passed some bolts through there, and I got a piece of two by four. Actually, I'm lying. That's not a two by four. That was a two by eight, and I ripped it down to a shorter size because it's nice and thick and strong, and I just did it. So uh, I got this board, and I trimmed this in so it would be at the same angle. As you can see, I've got some little uh, wing nuts on here so I can remove this to carry it around with me. And that's it. So that gives us, that, that solves half the problem. Half the problem is how do we get the actual motor mounted on the kayak? Well, that's how to mount it on here because it gives us the platform and then we screw this on and now we've got a motor that we can turn and you know have mounted. The other problem is we need power. Now this is actually a bigger problem because we don't want to be getting electrocuted or doing something stupid. So that's more complex. Here's what I did. First of all, I bought a little two-piece kit uh, to create a plug so that I could remove the kayak whenever, I mean the motor from the kayak whenever I wanted to. So I cut off the cable on the Minn Kota trolling motor and I put this male plug on it. I also got this female plug, which I had to cut a little hole in the kayak and mount this here. And now what I do is I just take this piece, plug it in and give it a slight turn and that's it. It's locked in. So that's locked in. This is all waterproof. It's made specifically for this purpose. So I don't have to worry about getting water on it at the lake. Now this piece underneath has some wires and they run underneath here and all the way underneath where the seat is and they come out over here. So you can see the wires down in here, uh, positive and negative. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck them up under the edge and they'll be secured up under here, but I wanted to leave them out so you guys could see everything. Now, those wires go to a battery box. Here's the battery we're going to use. Now, this is a marine grade battery, but marine batteries are very heavy. They can be like 75 pounds. And what you have to think about is this kayak has a total weight bearing capacity of about 275 pounds. I weigh 170, so we've got 100 pounds left. We don't want to fill up the whole thing with battery. So this is actually a small trolling motor battery. I'll put links to this, all this stuff I'm using in the show notes. So check geekbeat.tv for the show notes uh, and I'll give you the exact links. But this particular battery in theory should run that motor for a couple of hours at least on the lake. All right, having said that, you can't just stick a battery in the kayak. You have to have a box. So this is a battery box for it and there's a lid that goes on the box, okay? So that is going to be uh, connected, but there's one other thing that we have to do, which is we have to make sure that if in case everything gets wet, we don't want to burn out the motor or cause some kind of big short. So inside the lid of the battery box, I mounted this breaker. So in case something happens, it will trip a fuse instead of killing me or whatever might happen. Now, this battery box, the lid is gonna go on this and there's a little strap and this is gonna slide way down in the front of the kayak and what I did to keep it, um, to keep it there was I cut another two by four and I wedged it behind where the foot rests go. So because the nose is, com is coming together, 
I made it just big enough to barely clear on both sides, right there, and I literally just shoved it in place. It's not secured in any other way, but it's very, very tight. I can shake the whole thing. It's going nowhere. Now, it's got a couple of little strap holders on it, and we will use this strap to go around the battery box and hold it right there. You'll notice the kayak also has some nice grooves here, so that keeps it from sliding side to side, and that piece up there will hold it securely in place. These cables will all be wired up under the side so they'll be out of my way while I'm paddling. Okay, so now we've got it all wired up, we've got the battery secured, we got it fused. Now, if I sit in here and I want to turn it on, this is the nice part. So, this handle actually acts as the throttle. So there's forward speeds and there are reverse speeds. So for forward, I just turn it to let's say one and bingo. And we can turn it up to five speeds. So that, you can't really see it, but that is full, full throttle. Um, it's very quiet, can't hear it at all. And then I can also just turn this back and it's off. What's also nice is this handle will compress. It will come in or extend. So when I'm sitting in the kayak, I can get the handle kind of where I want it. All right? So that's how I did that. The total cost of everything to mount that kayak, uh, to mount that motor on the kayak, the motor itself was a hundred bucks and all the other pieces together, less than 50 bucks, plus the battery, which was about another 60 bucks. So I don't know, maybe 200, easily under $250 to put a motor on this thing. It should take it on the lake for hours. It can even pull another kayak at the same time and it'll go maybe about four, four and a half miles an hour. But stay tuned because I'll give you guys, I'll do some test video and we'll actually put it to use on a lake so I can give you real data. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick break to talk to you about Lumosity. Then when we come back, I'm gonna show you updates to the man cave we're standing in, and you're gonna get a first in detail look at the solar array up on the roof. Be right back. When I'm doing stuff in the garage or the attic or on the roof, I'm definitely getting my workout. And normally kayaking is great exercise too when I'm not cheating with an electric motor. But to be honest, I kind of veg out when I'm doing that stuff. So when it's time to give my brain a little exercise, I turn to Lumosity. The brainiacs behind Lumosity have taken a bunch of neuroscience-based training and converted it into fun games you can play to train your brain and give you improved memory and a better ability to focus your attention. It's easy to set up a free account and build a customized training plan. Just head over to lumosity.com forward slash geekbeat and give it a try. Two to three sessions a week and you'll see the same kind of brain improvements that you get by exercising your body two to three times a week. Check it out, lumosity.com forward slash geekbeat. Hey guys, okay, so the last time you saw the outside of my house, we were working on building the garage extension and we were just getting started with the solar array that was going on the roof. So now I wanna show you where we're at. All of our construction phase is finished. I actually have the garage, it's ready, but what I'm trying to do now is finish out the inside. So let me show you what I mean by that. This is the garage. So uh, it takes a second here for the camera to adjust, but it's, it's a big, big garage, okay? Um, it's almost 1,200 square feet of garage space, so it's, it's, it's big. Um, now, let's talk about how it's arranged. Over in here, there are shelves and stuff, and what I do is I keep all my components all the, the, the tools and things that I use. So obviously I've got a lot of different saws. It depends on what I need to saw, whether it's wood, whether it's metal, whether it needs to be portable, whatever. I've set up a little power stand here so that I can recharge all of my batteries of different devices. And uh, that's the charger for the battery for the kayak. And I can flip the whole thing off with one switch over there. So I try and keep everything nice and organized. I've got stuff up in, on, uh, in boxes. And there's more shelves over there. Uh, some other time I'll tell you why this goes back and the doors are inset, but not right now. That's a secret for later. However, let's keep going. 
So what we did was we had all the walls finished off and all the ceiling finished off. So this garage is actually just as nicely done, if not nicer, than the inside of a house, especially because the walls are not textured, they're flat finished, which takes a lot more work. That is part of the solar system. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, Keith is in here working on the electrical stuff. He's trying to finish up. We're putting speakers in. We've got the Sono system going in here. Uh, now, we're, we're coming over here to check out my special part of my uh, garage. This is the part I really love. This is the area that I built uh, specifically to be kind of the work zone. It's a wreck right now, ignore that. But you see it's all kind of, there's a corner that's offset back here. And I've got all kinds of tools going in. So this is a big industrial grinder. I can show you guys how that works later. I got my giant uh, compressor. I got my big welders. That's a MIG welder. That's a TIG welder. They're bi big daddies. That's my milling machine right there. I've also got a little lathe over here. I've got a drill press. We put shelves up here on the walls. And then you'll notice there's a big gap in the corner, but also notice that in that gap, there is uh, ethernet, coax, and a bunch of plugs. Why is that? Well, that's because we're going to put a flat screen TV and a sound bar. So if you guys recall, recall back when we were at CE Week, we interviewed the folks from Bello Digital and they showed us this sound bar mount, which uh, I can't wait to check out. But it lets you use a, it lets you mount a soundbar with a TV on a flat panel wall kind of thing. Well, what I'm doing is this flat screen is a ceiling mount. It's not a wall mount. It's going to be mounted up here in the ceiling, hanging down and kind of in between where the corner of this is and the corner of this is. So th it'll be hanging above the air compressor and have a soundbar because as you can imagine, it could be really loud and this is a big garage, so we won't be able to hear the TV if we're over in one area and just listening. The sound bar will give us the power and since we have four plugs up in the corner there, we can power the TV, the sound bar, and what else? An Apple TV, a Roku, we can mount all kinds of things to it. So that's uh, the good news there. Now we also put a ton, a ton of lighting in the garage because I don't just work in the day, sometimes I work at night. So over the workbench area here, we've got eight feet of lighting and each that's got four, uh, four rows of light bulbs in that lighting. There's more lighting over here, over there. There's anyway, there's almost 90,000 lumens worth of light in this garage when it's all turned on. So that's good. Another thing that we did were 220 volt outlets everywhere. I've got like, I don't know, six or eight of these in here. There's one, there's one. Those are what I need to power these big industrial kinds of equipment. Also, over on this side, in front of the biggest garage bay, we put a couple of more 220 outlets so that we could ultimately hook up uh, car chargers here, electric car chargers. What we'd like to do eventually as we're replacing our cars is move into the plug-in hybrids like the Volt or you know something like that so that we can use all this other stuff. Now this this garage is going to be much more awesome when I get it finished. Right now it's messy. There's still a big blank wall there. That's going to have cabinets all over it and all kinds of cool stuff. So later I'll show you guys as we get there. But for now, we're gonna go up in the attic. And one thing I want you to notice is we put a whole house attic fan in the garage because it pulls the air through the garage instead of having all this standing air in here, it dr draws it up through the attic. So we're climbing up into the attic. The ceiling is 10 feet tall. So we're kind of way up here now, but in the attic, we've actually got a completely finished space. So all the flooring here is decked out. Um, we have lighting in the attic and believe it or not, we have 110 volts outlets in the attic. So we could do things like turn on this blower and get even more air circulation through here. Uh, one of the things 
I'm also doing is putting in little shelving units like this so that I can store stuff up in here and uh, maximize my space. The ceiling is kind of low. It's only about four feet of space, but as you see, um, I've got a lot of storage area for all kinds of stuff. It's basically half the garage up here is floored in. But notice all that lighting? Well, that's coming from the hatch I put in the roof. Yes, folks, that is an industrial grade hatch in the roof that allows us to climb right up onto the roof from inside the garage. So now we're up on the roof. One of the benefits of this house we have is that it has a flat roof. Unlike the neighbors that have a pitched roof, it's kind of hard to do things there, but ours is flat. We can walk all over it and we can put big time solar panel arrays on the roof. So here's your first look at the finished solar system. I will, that sounded funny, solar system. I'll give you guys a big update coming up on this, but what you should know is this is a ballasted system. That means it's not bolted to the roof. It's held down with weight. So these panels are on a little framework that holds them at the right degree this way. And there's a bunch of bricks essentially holding them in place. That's 39 panels that generate almost 10,000 watts of energy and uh, it all comes out as DC current not AC which your house uses so we'll get to that in a second but those 39 panels are on three different braking kind of switches and we can turn them off right here with these big old breakers like if I shut that down we lose one-third of the solar array for each one of those so We'll go back down and I'll show you how we convert it to AC. Okay, remember I was saying that all the current that's being generated by those panels is direct current, DC current, but we need alternating current in the house to charge things up. These, these 110 outlets in the wall and the 220 outlets are AC current. That's where the sunny boy comes in. This is a big power inverter. So what it's doing is it's taking the electricity that's coming in as DC and it's converting it to AC, which it then feeds directly into a panel in our breaker box right here. Warning, that's the solar panel system right there. So it's actually really hot. When you touch it, it's hot. I guess I guess because it's generating a lot of power right now, our house at this moment is running solely on electrical power from the solar array. Also, we have this little thing here called the Sunny Web Box. This is what gives us stats that we can check through the web browser. So that's it. All right, guys, I showed you how to hack a kayak. We took a look at the man cave. You saw your first glimpse at the solar system, you know, the solar power array up on the roof. We're going to be back with more Geek Beat next week, but I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour. Please give me comments, give me feedback. If you have other ideas for cool things that I can do here to my garage and to any of this stuff, let me know. I watch that and I will implement them if it's good stuff. Give us a thumbs up and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.